This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Landmark College, offering bachelor's and associate programs, short-term and summer programs for students who learn differently. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Landmark College, the college of choice for students who learn differently. You know, our place is all about acceptance and giving people, you know, a, a new way of looking at the world while filtering out some of the noise of the world, um, some of the negativity of the world that they've been living with their, their entire lives in a lot of cases. So we give them that opportunity to just sit and focus on themselves and figure out their next steps while turning down the radio static, kind of, so to speak. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell, and welcome to Distraction. Today we have one of my favorite guests, one of the real innovators in the world of education, business, entrepreneurialism, a true pioneer, a leader in helping young people discover their way in life. His name is Rick Fiery, and he is in charge of Inventive Labs. And I just want him to tell you the story because it's such a wonderful story and he's such a remarkable man. And what he's doing with Inventive Labs is just uh, something that that really needs to be replicated all over the country, if not all over the world. So my friend and colleague, Rick Fiery, welcome to Distraction. Thank you very much, Ned. Thanks for having me back. Uh, tell us, Tell us about Inventive Labs. Well, Inventive Labs, it's hard to believe. I think uh, we, we started uh, um, a little over six years ago, and the initial concept was based upon some of the things that we talked about together uh, before we started up the lab, which was how talented the uh, population was out there with learning differences towards the concept of entrepreneurship. And we looked around the world and saw all the famous entrepreneurs in the place <laughs> and saw that many of the name brand celebrities and sports stars and, and entrepreneurs and business folks that you've heard of all had some form of learning differences. So that was really intriguing to us. And we started out initially purely, interestingly, as just a business incubator to help people with learning differences come in and create companies and create businesses from all the many hundreds of ideas in a lot of cases uh, in their heads and get it out of their heads and turn it into something. And one thing that we learned pretty interestingly, uh, very quickly, was that many of them, although they wanted to be an entrepreneur, that was a little bit daunting because they felt like in a lot of cases, especially the younger folks, that they hadn't really learned enough yet to go off and do that. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty quickly, one of the things you do in entrepreneurship is listen and react. And very quickly, we decided that we needed to move into the direction that many people were suggesting, which was also providing career guidance, even eventually a gap year program, which we did actually in year two, we started with the gap year program. Mm -hmm. And that was really to take some of these folks and give them you know, a bunch of options when they came in. What do you want to do? Do you want to start a company? Are you really looking to go to college? Or if you didn't make it through college, go back to the right college and the right career path. And uh, we evolved to that and then added the career piece very shortly thereafter. And the career piece is for the folks that have just said, you know, I'm not interested in college anymore. I've done that. I've had enough with formal education, and I'm just ready to enter the workforce. And we help them, you know, down that path as well. And the latest iteration that I think we talked about the last time was adding in the fact that companies – are now approaching us and trying to provide internships to folks to come and prove their worth. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the, the latest piece that we've added. You know, this is probably, interestingly enough, after entering our sixth year, this is probably the second year that we've done the same thing um, with our programs, which means that we're really kind of fine-tuning it and honing in on what we think it takes to get people to the next step. So it's been an interesting ride. It's a blur. I can't believe it's been six years since we first talked about this together. Um, mm -hmm. And it has evolved to the point where we're really, 
I think, quite frankly, that the satisfaction for us is we're changing people's lives in the process and giving mm. them new hope and new direction. And it helps not only, as you know, Ned, not just the person that is attending our program, but the entire family uh, that has been supporting them and helping them throughout their lives. So it's a really, really satisfying thing to do. And, and where do you find uh, your new, you call them inventives, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, we call them inventors. It's interesting. Last year, we had the group together and we said, you know, is there a better name to call you guys? Inventive yeah. sounds a little bit, you know, out there, a little bit geeky. And uh, they brainstormed a bunch of different ideas and finally came back and said, yeah, inventives works. Uh -huh. We, we kind of uh -huh. like that. Um, so we yeah. find them um, through just outreach, uh, people through word of mouth, um, through some of the social media marketing and things that we do through newsletters. I think you've talked about us in your newsletter. Yeah. And people kind of, when they hear about it and they see what we're doing, they almost know right away whether it's a fit or not because, you know, yeah. our place is all about acceptance and giving people, you know, a, a new way of looking at the world while mm -hmm. filtering out some of the noise of the world, um, mm -hmm. some of the negativity of the world that they've been living with their, mm -hmm. their entire lives in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. So we give them that opportunity to just sit and focus on themselves and figure out their next steps while turning down the radio static kind of so to speak i've been up there it's like a it's like a big uh, warehouse it's like the floor of a warehouse so wh what happens in, a, in an average day in the inventive uh, uh floor there you've got this big huge space and what, yeah. what goes on we designed it so that you know everybody has a different way of working some folks mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. extroverts and need to work in teams some folks mm -hmm. are introverts mm -hmm. and need some quiet space and recharge space. So we've laid out the space where you can pick you know, anything on a sliding scale from complete isolation to almost a party-type atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then around the edges, the outskirts of the lab, we have things like um, you know, separate rooms for 3D printing or crafts or woodworking if people want to do stuff with their hands computer rooms where they can go take online courses and try to figure out, you know, kind of what, what kind of works for them from a learning style standpoint. So there's all kinds of different cubby holes and places where people can kind of get away and go work together in teams or by themselves. And then the typical day, <laughs> I think you'll appreciate this, Ned, we give the, the team the opportunity to pick when they want to start in the morning. And I think you can guess it's not 8 a.m. <laughs> as a group. Um, usually it's like 11 or 12. And when we're you like, say, you when know. you say the team, you mean the, the, all the inventives? The team of inventives, yeah. Usually that's He's... kind of a discussion in the first week. In fact, we just had our six team in, and we had that discussion last week. And I think we've honed in on 10, 15 as okay. the start time. So everybody, everybody's expected to show up at 10, 15. Yep, and that's part of the, the learning. <laughs> which is you have to learn how to show up to things on time. Right. And then we, uh, we'll do some you know, mindfulness exercises in some cases. Yeah. Um, we'll do some help people build some strategies for executive function challenges that they face, but dive into the detail of what it takes to get a job or create a company in today's workforce and how they should effectively kind of design themselves so that they can get the job that they're coveting and the job that they're you know, craving. So we start out with a lot of brainstorming and group sessions, and then it starts to narrow down to where they uh, create a list. And we try to get to a list of 100 careers or even 100 business ideas. And, uh, you know, you see people say, oh, my gosh, that many. And uh, for people with ADHD, that's usually a minimum. <laughs> it's not a problem to come up with that many. The challenge they have is narrowing that down. And that's where we use a lot of different filters and techniques and, you know, trend analysis and looking at, you know, what businesses are hiring people with college degrees and without college degrees. And we help them filter that down to three or four, either career types or business ideas. And then after that, the lab kind of transforms and it's more about getting them out of the lab into the mm -hmm. workforce and, you know, doing job shadowing, internships, mentorships, just to experience it. Because, you know, as you know, there's, you know, there's a kind of the shiny brochure for right. a typical job is not what the typical job is like. Right. <laughs> you know, right. for computer science, it's like, wow, I get to build all these cool technologies in this and, right. and work crazy hours and play ping pong. And the reality is you're sitting in a cube for 8 to 12 hours a day writing right. code every day. 
Right. And we've had a number of folks approach us after getting a college degree in computer science and say, I can't do that. <laughs> right. It doesn't right. work for me. For that reason, it's very clear to us that people should be trying out a career, like, kind of like trying on a suit to see mm -hmm. if it fits before you spend all that money on mm -hmm. education. And uh, that's what we're really about. The first half is really ideation, and then the second mm -hmm. half is try it. And then after hopefully eight months of our program, we break it into two four-month sessions. They can then figure out you know, what their next step is and what they should at least be aiming for. How, how long does the average inventive spend? It's usually eight months. So we have two four-month sessions, and we intentionally matched it up to the college um, kind of schedule because uh, uh -huh. folks tend to like to hang out with their friends <laughs> in the summer and get summer jobs and help get some extra cash and then come in and focus on themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that said, though, we do have people that have graduated from college in our mm -hmm. programs, and we do have people that are later in their careers that are looking to do something different. And do people, when they finish the eight months, w what happens? Well, there's a couple of paths they can take. If somebody's looking to start up a company, um, many of them look to kind of friends and family to fund it and help them get started in the early stages. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd say probably about two-thirds of our folks either enter the workforce and start working on their career path. Um, and it's probably split 50-50, quite honestly, between that, going into the workforce, and then going into college. So mm -hmm. I'd say about 20 to 30 percent look at doing a business, about 40 percent do a career, and uh, the remainder is college. And mm -hmm. the interesting thing is people that we typically get may have tried college, and for us, they may be looking to transfer into a different college once they figure out their path. And uh, thankfully, the college transfer application deadlines are in May, not in November. So they get that eight months to really try everything out and then really make the call as to whether they want to transfer into another college or go back to the original college that they started mm -hmm. at. So now you're starting a new year, and you have how many? We're a very high-touch environment, as you can imagine. So it right. takes a lot of shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder work. So we have 12 inventives this year, which is actually the, the biggest number that we've had. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that always comes learning. <laughs> what's, the, what's the age range? Anywhere from 18, right out of high school, up until, I'm not even going to say, let's just say above 30. Well, this, this year, it's 18 this year, is the yes. youngest? The youngest is 18. The sweet spot okay. is usually around 20, 21 years old. Okay. Um, that's where we find most of our folks, uh, if you drew okay. a bell curve. In a lot of cases, we have some that are doing gap year and doing this to college to really figure yeah. out what it's like to live away from home and you know, focus on what they should be majoring in without the mm -hmm. crush of academics happening at the same time. I know a mm -hmm. lot of people just dive right into college and think they can figure it out, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a little bit of a false prophecy there. Mm -hmm. um, so we have people that are 18, and then we have other folks that have tried college and are just looking to find a different path uh, that may or may not include college for them. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it might be people that have picked a degree but want to do something different with their lives after they've uh, completed mm -hmm. college. So it's quite a mix. And we like that mix because everyone's had different life experiences to share, and people can ask questions and, and see what other people's journeys have been. It's a wonderful thing that you're doing. Thanks. I think one of the things that, you know, I've, I've got this bad analogy, but I kind of like it, is that for us, what we're trying to avoid doing here is put a cheetah in a cage, supposedly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if you think about it, you know, a cheetah is a majestic animal that can hyper-focus and kill its prey and run at 80 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. And if you take that cheetah and you put it in the wrong job and in the wrong environment, they're not going to shine. And, mm -hmm. in fact, if you walk down the, the row of cubicles and you saw all these different kinds of cats in the zoo, so to speak, you'd never really fully understand what that cheetah was capable of until you put them out on the savanna. Mm -hmm. And then you might even think that, that you look at them as kind of a skinny cat. You know, what, what's the point of that thing uh, in our business or in our, in our company? And the reality is if you put them in the wrong place and give them the wrong job, they aren't really going to shine. So our whole mm -hmm. thing is figure out what people's strengths are and figure out what their weaknesses are and get them mm -hmm. into positions where they absolutely maximize their strengths and minimize their weaknesses mm -hmm. and give them the greatest chance for success. And if you don't do that, 
they end up in the wrong job and the wrong career. The cycle of failure can continue again. They start to get in some of the other bad sides of ADHD with anxiety and depression and all the other things that start to kick in. Mm-hmm. And that's just a recipe for disaster. So for us, kind of our mission here is to find that you know the right place for them to where they can maximize their strengths. And everybody's different. <laughs> You know, everybody has different skills and different skill sets. And how do you help them find their strengths and their interests? A lot of different testing that we try to do. Um, one is uh, we do a, use a product called U-Science, uh-huh. which is kind of a testing routine that comes up with some pretty good matches, interestingly enough, at least for our population on different career paths. And that's based purely on aptitude. So we use that as a foundation. Of course, Myers-Briggs, um, mm-hmm. observational, you know, just watching the team and how they operate and how they interact in a group and coaching them in that regard. And then we also do a lot of brainstorming. So it's kind of a swirl of all those different things and capturing everything that comes out of that process Mm -hmm. and storing it and then analyzing it and helping people kind of think through the the thought process of of what it takes to become successful based on where they're at. It's such a great thing. Now, if people want to find out more, Rick, what what do they do? What what should they do? Well, we have a website that people have told us is pretty engaging. We have uh, some testimonials on there and videos, and that's at uh, inventivelabs.org. So it's I-N-V-E-N. T I V E L A B S dot org. Mm-hmm. Um, the other way is just Google my name. I can't hide with the name of Rick dot Rick Fiery, <laughs> uh-huh. and it'll it'll pop right up to the top. Um, but how do you spell Fiery? <laughs> it's F I E R Y. And okay, also, so. if they Google that, um, a lot of people have watched the TEDx talk that I gave that really uh-huh. kind of highlighted the genesis of the lab. And I did that four or five years ago. Uh-huh. And I would say uh-huh. that many of the people that have ended up in our program said they watched that and they knew that they had met somebody that had finally gotten it mm. and had finally figured out a way uh, to make them feel positive about themselves. So that TEDx for, for folks, if they Google my name and then TEDx, that might pop up too. So if people wanted to kind of see our mission and our vision, I think that TEDx was very heartfelt and it showed really what we were all about. Yeah, well... Everything you guys do is very heartfelt and and very smart. It's really wonderful. Thank you for coming on and telling us about it. I hope people listening, if you know somebody who is not right for college but is talented and wants to, you know, discover what his or her talents might be and and get the beginnings of a business going and work with other people like that, Inventive Labs is the perfect place to do it. This is what Rick has put together, and uh, it's it's remarkable how how well it works, and it it just makes such common sense. Um, again, it's inventivelabs.org. That's correct. Inventivelabs.org. Wonderful. It's so good to have you, Rick. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, that's it for today's episode. If you have an idea for a future episode, let us know. Send your ideas in an email to connect at distractionpodcast.com. That's connect at distractionpodcast.com. I'm Dr. Ned Hallowell. Thank you so very, very much for listening. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. Our producer is the unmatchable Sarah Gurton. And our audio engineer is the equally unmatchable Pat Keogh.